Anytime you see a lot of repeating if, else or switch statements in your code, you should be asking yourself, can I do better? And if you only need to validate that an object is in a certain state before you perform some action, I have good news for you. You can simplify your code, making it easier to maintain, read and add to using the state pattern. I do have to warn you that you'll actually write more code, but if your performance is for some reason evaluated by the number of lines of code you write, this is in your favor. Favor. Let's look at the code that has a potential to be converted to use the state pattern. Here we have an order class that has a few methods and in each method we print something different depending on the current state of the order. As you can see, there is a lot of if and elif statements. This makes our class very hard to modify and very prone to errors, especially if you don't have an existing unit test cover. Here is the diagram of the state pattern. It's actually really simple. A state is just that. A state an object can be in. More states an object can be in, more implementations of the state interface you will have to write. What about the context? Think of a context as of state of states. It represents our object's current state as well as stores other states an object can be in. So in our case, order class would be the context. Now let's see how we can convert the existing order class to use the state pattern. First, let's define which methods should be on our interface. In our case, it's going to be the same methods we have on the order class. Receive pay payment, ship and mark deliver. Now we need to define which states we will implement in their own classes. That's pretty easy as well. It's all the states the order was already keeping track of. So we will have unpaid state, paid state, shipped state and delivered state. Before we put any logic in them, we need to make a few changes to the order class. Let's replace our state variables from using integers as state to using the newly created state classes. Also let's add a new state method so we could handle the state changes. Now let's implement our state classes based on the logic in the order class. Let's start with the unpaid state. First, we'll need a reference to the context or the order object so we could change the state if needed. In the receive payment, we can change the state to paid and print a message that the payment was accepted. Now, in the ship function, we just print that we can't ship unpaid orders. And in the mark delivered function, we say that we can't deliver orders that aren't shipped. And we repeat the same process for the paid state. Once again, in the paid state, we accept order in the constructor. In the receive payment, we say that the order has already been paid for. Of course, we could try charging the customer twice, but that's not very ethical and we don't want to create a bad customer experience and also deal with refunds. In the ship method, we set the state to ship and print a message that the order was shipped. And in the mark delivered method, we print that only shipped orders can be marked as delivered. And we repeat the process for the shipped and delivered state. I actually would like you to pause this video and try to implement these classes yourself. I'm just going to quickly fast forward it since we are basically just repeating the same process. Finally, let's change our order class and watch the magic unleash. The whole block in receive payment becomes self.state.receive payment. The whole block in ship becomes self.state.ship. And the whole block in mark delivered becomes self.state mark delivered. Didn't it just become so beautiful? Let's run it to make sure it still works correctly. As you can see, it still works correctly and sets the state just as we would expect. If you enjoyed this pattern, you may also enjoy the strategy pattern whenever you click the next video.